Three partial fraction decomposition example problems fully worked out showing the three most common cases you're gonna see in an engineering class. Problem one has the factorization in the denominator already completed for you, which means your professor was very nice, which means that you're probably never gonna see this case very often at all. Problem two has factoring still required in the denominator, and then problem three has repeated roots or repeated factors in the denominator. So I'm gonna work through all three of these example problems, including using the Laplace transform tables to actually solve for a final answer, x of t. And the first step to partial fraction decomposition or partial fraction expansion is to figure out what your fractions are gonna be. When the factoring is already done in the denominator, that's pretty straightforward. You just split them up. So four divided by this denominator is gonna split into a coefficient over s plus three and a coefficient over s plus eight. And I'm choosing s plus three and s plus eight because when I look at my Laplace transform table, I see that there's a pair, a Laplace transform pair for one over s plus a, where a just refers to a number. Now, when you're splitting your uh, x of s into these separate fractions, you wanna make sure that each fraction exactly corresponds to something on this table because we don't wanna have to do any calculus. We're just gonna use the table to go back and forth. And now looking ahead, we can already kind of see what the final answer is gonna be. The final answer for x of t is gonna be c1e to the negative 3t plus c2e to the negative 8t. Just again, using this Laplace transform table. So we just need to find c1 and c2. And in order to do this, this is the partial fraction decomposition part, we're gonna first take these fractions over on the right-hand side, the c1 over s plus three, and we're gonna rebuild this into the same denominator as is on the left-hand side. So left-hand side is s plus three and s plus eight. So for c1 over s plus three, I need to multiply it by s plus eight over s plus eight. This way, this term cancels out and I'm left with C1 over S plus three that I want, but I have the same denominator, S plus three times S plus eight, because when you are adding fractions, you have to have the same denominator. So I wanna make sure that all of my fractions for this whole problem have the same denominator. So for C2, this means I'm multiplying by S plus three over S plus three in order now all three of my terms, the four, and the C1 and the C2, they all have S plus three and S plus eight in the denominator. And then if I multiply all three terms by that denominator, I can look at just the numerators by themselves, that four is equal to C1 times S plus eight plus C2 times S plus three. And at first, this seems like I only have one equation and I have two unknowns, which would be impossible to solve. But you can actually split up all of the S terms but this is kind of like when you're doing a sum of forces in the x direction and a sum of forces in the y direction. You can split up the x and the y into two separate equations. Or when you're adding together sine and cosine terms, you can split up and add all the sine terms separately and all the cosine terms separately. So I'm gonna split up this numerator equation into separate terms based on powers of s. So my s terms, there's zero on the left-hand side, then c1 times s and c2 times s. Now for the s to the zero term, just the regular numbers, there's four on the left-hand side, eight c1 and three c2. And this leaves me with just a regular system of equations that I can plug into my calculator. Um, basically any calculator, I have a TI-36X Pro can do this. Probably any calculator you have can do a set of two, uh, two equations, two unknowns. So plug it in, I get C1 is positive four fifths and C2 is negative four fifths. And I already found the form of the solution up above, right? Using the Laplace transform tables was gonna be E to the negative AT. And so I've got four fifths E to the negative three T minus four fifths E to the negative eight T. And, and that's it. That's the final answer for the time response of this system. And just like that, a third of the way done, your T-A-N-D is hanging out back by his treadmill means he wants us to get through these next two problems as fast as possible because he wants to play. 
Problem number two. Now we've got s squared plus 8s plus 116 in the denominator. Now, at a glance, this 116 looks really big. If I tried to guess how this might factor, right, you, you want your factors to add up to 8 and to multiply to 116. So like 4 times 4 is 16, or 5 times 3 is 15, 6 times 2 is 12, right? All of these possible factors, and you'll usually, hopefully for textbook problems, usually use integers for these, but you could always just plug it into the quadratic equation to find out exactly. But all of these numbers are way less than 116. So in this case, we actually are gonna have to sort of factor, and there's gonna be a remainder after the factoring. So I'm gonna take out s plus four squared, right, which is s squared plus eight s plus 16, and that's gonna leave an extra factor of 100, which sort of senses should be kind of tingling here. 100 is also a square, so that leaves s plus four squared plus 10 squared. And now let me check the table in the Laplace transform tables and to see if there's any transforms that have this form, right? S plus A squared plus B squared. And there is, there's actually two. There's one that has just a number in the numerator, B divided by that fraction. And that's E to the negative AT sine BT. But there's another one too that has S plus A in the numerator. And that goes to E to the negative AT cosine of BT. So for my partial fraction decomposition, I'm actually gonna split up my original fraction into these two fractions, including the numerators, even leaving these B and S plus A terms in the numerator, because when you do a Laplace transform, you have to match the table exactly. If you don't have exactly B in the numerator of the S plus A squared plus B squared term, then it doesn't actually work. So any numerator that's different than B, you have to kind of pull out a coefficient or something. Your TA Indiana's favorite thing is his hamster wheel, but his second favorite thing is when you hit the thumbs up button. He loves it when you like the video, so if you wanna go ahead and do that, then all right, let's get back to the partial fractions. My partial fraction decomposition right-hand side is gonna be C1, 10, over s plus four squared plus 10 squared. Again, 10 is that B term. So I have to have 10 in the numerator, not just C1, that 10 has to be there. Then C2, s plus four over s plus four squared plus 10 squared. Again, the s plus four exactly has to be there since that's exactly what is in the transform table. My denominators are already equal, so I don't need to do any extra steps. I can just go ahead and multiply all terms by the denominator, which lets me leave with just the numerator part. So I've got 4s plus 13 on the left is equal to 10c1 plus c2s plus four on the right. Again, I'm gonna separate these terms. I've got an s term and then an s to the zero term, right? Just the numbers. So the s term four is equal to well, zero plus C2, because the, the C1 term doesn't have S in it. And then my, my number equation, 13 is equal to 10 C1 plus four C2. Well, I don't even need to put these into my calculator. I can tell right away that C2 is equal to four. And when I plug that four into the second equation, uh, that gets a 16 and I'll subtract that 16 over it. So negative three is equal to 10 C1. I get C1 is equal to negative three tenths. Since C2 was part of the S plus four term, that's gonna be part of the cosine BT, part of the Laplace transform, and C1 was had 10 in the numerator, right? That was the B in the numerator term. That'll be the E to the negative AT sine of BT. So my final expression for X of T, negative three tenths, E to the negative four T sine 10 T, plus four e to the negative four t cosine 10 t. And so that's the solution to this ordinary differential equation. It looks like Tia Indiana ran off to take care of some kitty business, so we're on our own for this last one. And it's gonna be the longest one, but it, it's not really that much harder, it's just a lot more tedious. This denominator has an s to the fourth power term, and when looking at the Laplace transform table, 
every different power of s has a different transform. And it's gonna basically be a function of time in the final answer, whether it's gonna be time or time squared or time cubed. And there's no way for us to know right now at this point, if this s to the fourth should be just an s to the fourth term, that's gonna mean that our final answer has a t cubed, or there's no way for us to know if this should actually be a s cubed times s, which means that the final answer is gonna have a number plus times squared. And so since we have no idea what the final answer could look like, and both of these are possible, whenever you have repeated roots, when you do your partial fraction decomposition, you have to include every piece of that root. So one over s, one over s squared, one over s cubed, and one over s to the fourth. We have to account for all of these possibilities because each one of them could be a part of the final answer. They may or may not all be part of the final answer. Sometimes they will all be part of the final answer. Sometimes these coefficients, some of these coefficients might end up being zero and they weren't necessary, but there's no way for us to know. We have to keep all of them. And just confirming that I have split this up properly, I first wanna check the Laplace transform table and make sure that I actually do have a transform pair for each of these fractions because one thing you do not want to ever do is to solve for your coefficients, do your whole partial fractions, and then go to do your Laplace transform and realize that the thing you're trying to transform isn't in the table and you just have to start over and redo all of it. So make sure that you can do that last step going from these fractions to x of t. Make sure you have those pairs in your table first so then once you find the coefficients, you get the final answer. You don't wanna to have to redo, redo all of that. When you just have like a one over s or one over s cubed, that's gonna be this row n factorial over s n plus one. And that's gonna to correspond to t to the n when you go back to the time domain. So for n equals zero, this is gonna be one over s, which is gonna to correspond to just a number, just one in your final answer. For n equals one, this is gonna be a one over s squared, which will be a t term, like a ramp function. For two, it's gonna be two over s cubed, which is gonna be a time squared. And for three, it's three factorial over s three plus one, so six over s to the fourth, and that's gonna become the t cubed term. As we did in the previous problem, one over s plus a is a, a decrease in exponential, right? e to the negative a t. That's gonna be the, the transient term that's gonna kind of disappear over time. So when writing out my fractions, now I'm gonna actually include that two and the six, which I didn't include before. When I wrote up in purple there, I was just sort of guessing what I thought the fractions were gonna be. But then when I checked the table, to make sure that I had the right fractions, it turns out that I was wrong on two of those. The s cubed and the s to the fourth term actually need a two and a six in the numerator. It's a good thing I checked about this because that definitely would mess up the final answer. Now here becomes the tedious part, right? This is the previous ones only had like two fractions. This one's got five fractions. So I first want to rewrite all of my fractions with the exact same denominator so that I can cancel out the denominator. And this means for each fraction, I need to multiply by all of the rest of the stuff to make it equal. And so for the one over s term, I need to multiply by s cubed s plus two so that the denominator will be s to the fourth. For the c2 term, I need to multiply by s squared times s plus two. Since I already have an s squared, s squared, s squared makes s to the fourth and carry on through all the rest. I need to scroll over the page a little bit to, to make some extra room. And once I cancel out all of the denominators, then I'm left with just an equation with a numerator, which again, at first seems problematic because I have five unknowns and only one equation, but I'm gonna be able to create five equations by separating each of them out based on their S term. Five equations, s to the fourth, s to the third, s to the second, s, and then the numbers, which is like the s to the zero. 
finding all the expressions that have s to the fourth in them, zero on the left-hand side, there's just c1 and c5. <laughs> Ooh, it looks like I had a typo in here. I barely caught it. This, uh, the c1 equation should be 2s to the third, not just 2s. So when I write my s to the third, there should be one on the left-hand side, 2c1, and c2 on the right-hand side. Looking for s squared terms, zero on the left, 2c2, and 2c3 on the right-hand side. My s to the first power terms, one on the left, 4c3, and 6c4 on the right. And for my uh, number terms, the s to the zero, there's six on the left, and just 12c4 on the right. And this looked like it was gonna be five equations, five unknowns, a big matrix. Fortunately, the last equation only had one unknown in it, so I can solve for a term right off the bat, uh, divide the 12 over, I get right away that C4 is equal to one half. And now you can kind of see, since all of the equations up above, all have two terms in them, it looks like I'm probably gonna be able to just hop from one to the next, just plug in the answer I find in the equation right above it and solve for the next one. So the S1 equation, one is equal to four C4 plus six times the one half. This is gonna give me a value for C3 of negative one half. Now I can plug that number into the S squared equation. Zero is equal to two C2 plus two times negative one half. That's gonna give me a C2 value of positive one half. Plug that value into the next equation, get C1 equals positive one fourth. And plug that value into the next equation and get C5 is equal to negative one fourth. And going back up to the green where I had already checked the tables to make sure that these had Laplace transform pairs, I know that my final answer is gonna be C1 plus C2t, C3t squared, C4t cubed, and C5e to the negative 2t. And so plugging in the coefficients is gonna give me that x of t, the final general response, the, the general solution to this ordinary differential equation, 1 fourth plus 1 half t, minus 1 half t squared, plus 1 half t cubed, minus 1 fourth e to the negative 2t. So it turns out that every one of those fractions actually was required for this problem. All of the repeated roots were actually part of a final solution. Next video up on the screen here, free and forced response, also called homogeneous and particular solution, where you're actually gonna start from the ordinary differential equation and go all the way through and account for both a forcing function and initial conditions in order to find the general solution.